How's it going everybody? In today's video we're going to be breaking down the top 5 power couples in Marvel Strike Force. These are the kind of characters where you just invest in these two. They're going to give you value in all sorts of game modes, not just on their team, not just in their mode. There's some very specific criteria here and we're only going to talk about the best of the best. Number five on this list is the cockroaches of the power couple communities in Marvel Strike Force. And we are talking, of course, about the Eternals. So why the Eternals? Why are they still in the meta years later when they really have no right to be? Comes down to speed, 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 speed is king of this game. And the Eternals do a really nifty ultimate one-two punch where Icarus, if Cersei's an ally, he's flipping buffs with 500% extra focus. If he kills somebody, he's going to double tap for 400% more damage on top of that plus 40 percent piercing and then a 25 percent rewind 25 percent rewind is nothing to stick your nose up and of course they're going to be spawning with offense up they get speed up uh intermittently and then the special from icarus is also going to remove death proofs it calls an assist from more recent characters that have been added so lots of damage can come from this if they block like say there's a captain america and the block happens watch out because icarus damage is going to be crazy now there has been a big shakeup on Icarus's front. You definitely want him as a raider now. I believe Jarvis is probably still saying striker. Definitely not a striker, guys. I would strongly recommend Raider. The damage he gets from his crits, especially when he does loop around to do that special, is amazing. Raider is the move now. There's much more interesting strikers out there. But his partner in crime, Cersei, she's going to be coming through with her ultimate as well, which is going to be doing a 25% rewind in its own right. It's going to clear your team of debuffs, which is useful because these guys, they're not the center point of a team anymore. They are the power couple that kind of elevates the characters you're trying to bring in. You're trying to bring Apocalypse, take out care of an unlimited team, boom, Eternals, smash it down. You're trying to bring the Eternals in with a Skrull, maybe with another power couple on the other side to take out Extreme, boom, done. So this is why they're super useful because they're giving your team protection, they're rewinding the enemy team. For that reason, they had to make this list. She's still a skirmisher for whatever that's worth. And they're in, coming in at number five. Though. Let's go talk about number four. Number four on this list are going to be the one-two punch of, of course, Kang, who is an amazing character. He's going to be giving whatever team he's on a 5% speed bar. He's going to give him slow to the enemies. He's got a perma kill on his ultimate, giving defense down, of course, when he basics somebody, especially when they have vulnerables, is going to be giving him a crap ton of speed bar. It's going to be giving, I believe it's 40% total if he's hitting into a vulnerable, which is fantastic. He's still a striker. And then Titania is actually going to get the nod above the other Master of Evil members. She's got that ability block plus disrupt on her ultimate that comes in super handy if you're trying to use this one-two punch against something like extreme and her special is going to be ripping off buffs of the enemy which is also very 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 important and she's actually going to be getting i believe it's extra focus on her ultimate it's just 100 percent, so it's not as powerful as icarus is but that's going to be coming in handy as well you want her as raider kang is a striker so why are we talking about the masters of evil team they're going to be the new they're going to be the same situation new warriors are very soon where it's like every single team can't really be beaten by Masters of Evil. Think about it. Spider Society. Masters of Evil alone, super sketchy. We talk about uh, Mercs for Money. Hey, they can actually beat that full team. Throw in a pre-taunt. Oh, poop. Not gonna work, right? We talk about Sinister Six, or Superior Six, rather. That's not gonna happen. You think about um, like Black Knight with the Unlimited team. Well, that one's super tough. We look at any sort of Skrull team. That's gonna be bonkers too much. They're gonna be getting phased out soon. So if you want to salvage these guys, you should probably be looking at just Kang and Titania. On my baby account, I will be investing in these two characters to pair with Cabal. Yes, they're getting a huge buff right now because of the season rules, but in the future, Titania is still a super fast villain because of her passive. Kang is still an amazingly fast character, and so them with Cabal still makes a lot of sense if you're looking to make like the best team out of these two together. All right, moving on. The greatest war our world has ever faced landed here on our doorstep. All right, so far the two teams that we've talked about are the offensive side. Let's look at the defensive side of things real quick. Black Knight. Yeah, so Black Knight plus anybody, right? Sure, that's true. Black Knight is an amazing character. When he comes in with his passive, he's going to be hitting for 30% of his max life, which is why everyone is just building their Black Knight as high as they can because his character is ridiculous, ridiculous, too much damage. He comes in with that spawn, defense up, immunity. He gets 1,000% extra resistance. He puts trauma, plus heal block, plus bleed. What this character does is stupid. I've seen this character solo 
a superior six team. It's dumb. It's way too much power. This is the one of the jump off points for like the power rocket ship away from normality that Scopely has started to do. But he is counterable by people who can rip off that opening taunt and the defense up if they can match his extra resistance. We're talking about Big Time Spider-Man. We're talking about Gwenum, or sorry, Gwen Poole. We're talking about characters like Void Knight, a character like Vulture, that sort of thing. So how can you help your Black Knight not have to worry about that? Look no further. This guy can do it all freaking day. We're talking about Captain America and his on-spawn deflex. Now, some people think deflect gives them, like, extra resistance. So, Void Knight should still flip it. No, 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 no. It is a baseline resist chance. I can't remember if it's 20% or 25%. But in a matchup where you're, you're banking on Void Knight flipping that taunt the defense up from the Black Knight and his alt fails because of the 20% RNG chance... This is where matches are decided. This is where, like, the upper echelon things can go super south when te when players are budgeting really hard for a strong Mercs for Mouth team or a strong Superior 6 team, and then they're trying to use a lesser team against your Black Knight plus Captain America plus Gambit and Rogue, and things go south really quick. So that's why those two characters definitely get the nod. As far as ISO goes on these guys, I think you just put them both as a fortifier because it's not very interesting. Dementos is letting me know right now it is 25% chance on the deflect to instantly fail. Instantly fail. That's why new warriors get demolished. By That's why whenever somebody sees a Black Knight team and they want to use new warriors, guess what? They got to throw Apocalypse in there and that's a big pull. That's a huge benefit for you. Let's head on over to Charles Xavier's Institute for Gifted Youngsters and go to the oldest person there. Why is he at the school? Somebody call security. Old Man Logan is a stupidly powerful character in his own right. I've already talked about this character ad nauseum. What's more to say? Speed bar, speed bar, stun, trauma, revive, revive, heals, no debuffs. Can't be stunned, can't be terminated. Right? This character is stupid. And he can be made even stupider by pairing him with Nightcrawler. So what does Nightcrawler bring to Old Man Logan? Well, first of all, Nightcrawler spawning in with that 120 speed plus speed up is a very fast character. He's also going to be giving dodge to himself and Old Man Logan, which can cause some issues. And then when you look at the special of Nightcrawler, this is his first turn. We got turn one stun with Expose, but that's, that's kind of whatever, right? The interesting part is this. Fill speed bar by 20%. For self and all X-Men allies. Old Man Logan is an X-Men ally. They wanted to give him that kit so that we could really feel the pain and torture of them not knowing what the hell they're doing with their game. He's crazy! And Nightcrawler makes him that much crazier. So he's getting 20% speed bar there. He's also going to be getting speed bar from his own passive when he gets called for an assist. Unless they were able to stop that right. So that's 20% there. He's getting so much speed out the gate. Nightcrawler is also going to stop an enemy Emma from being able to come in and cause havoc. Nightcrawler is already a stupidly powerful character. Coming in with his uh, health trigger where he gets the safeguard, drops his debuffs, heals up, gives him speed bar. If he ults, he rips the buffs off of everybody. If Old Man Logan hasn't already done it, which let's not kid ourselves, Old Man Logan has already killed the entire team before Nightcrawler gets out of bed. Well, after he does the special, then he takes a nice little nap. Uh, this is a ridiculous power couple. Now... In Crucible, if you just put Nightcrawler with Old Man Logan and no pre-taunt, Master Eel can still get in here and mix it up. But you throw in a Red Guardian, oh boy howdy, they are pissed. They are mad. They, they do not like you at that point. So make sure if you want to use that power couple in Cosmic Crucible, follow it up with a little pre-taunt. That's going to give you a lot of benefit. But this team is insane, which makes you wonder, what the hell is number one? Number one on this list, it's Mephisto. No, it's not. Mephisto is a one-man team. Look, we can give a shout-out if you want, because you compare Mephisto with freaking Hawkeye, and that is an unbeatable juggernaut killing machine, unless you go into Crucible, and then Cabal is going to its gonna give you a bad time. But he's not going to make this list, because there is no there is no exact character that's going to make Mephisto that much better, that's going to change matchups, because Mephisto does what he does on his own. He gets his speed bar, he puffs off, you get your buffs. That's not who we're talking about. Instead, we're talking about who should be a Dark Dimension 
5.5 character? Apocalypse. Yeah, so Apocalypse is an amazing character. He's the first part of this power couple. He comes in, he's got the safeguard, he gives the anti focus to his enemy team. He's going to alt turn one, which is going to, if he's empowered, of course, you're just going to flip all your buffs, give you trauma, empower him, and then he's going to do this punch, which I don't know what Scopely was thinking when they give this change when he first came out. 60% of targets max health, plus damage that Apocalypse does, plus he gains offense up. This is a stupid attack that is made only stupider by his partner. So who is his partner? What's well, Apocalypse? He should be paired with the Horseman, right? What are we thinking? We thinking Rogue? We thinking Archangel? We thinking Morgan the Fae? Or are we thinking about the big raid machine, Kane? I mean, Red Hulk. Yes, Red Hulk is an amazing character to pair with Apocalypse. But it's not just because he gives the speed bar to Apocalypse just by using his special. It's not just because he's going to be giving the Apocalypse extra chance to do his retaliate. No, it's because he's also going to be ripping revives off of everybody that is special hits when apocalypse is an ally this has proved to be an instrumental change in certain crucible matches especially when they're trying to put a dorm in there or they're trying to take advantage of that stage five currently in crucible but it goes beyond that gamma apocalypse is a mainstay war offense team right now whenever you see scroll plus anything and that's why these guys had to be one even over old man logan i'm open to that debate also let's be real Old Man Logan's a power couple with a lot of people. Similar to Skrull, he's kind of a one-man show, but if you pair him with like a Noir, a Black Knight, whatever the case may be, that's insane. But for this instance, Red Hulk and Apocalypse gonna take the cake there. And just to show you how serious I am about the value of this one-two punch, we're gonna put gear tier 19 on Red Hulk. We're gonna do it. I wish I brought Red Hulk over Rogue to Dark Dimension 7. The only reason I didn't is because we didn't have the bio gear. We had extra mutant gear. But that's gonna be it for this list, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other power couples, especially if they have the GOAT on it. I'm, of course, talking about OG Hawkeye. Miss me with that Ronin nonsense. Even uh, the, the beat-up Hawkeye, that would be cool, too. Let me know your power couples in the comment section below. But for now, stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye for now. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bonus content! All right, so, uh, I don't know what I just did. Uh, I just wanted to give some runner-ups here, because we did talk about the top five. I think that's an interesting enough list, and there's obviously some big substitutions you make there. Throw in Noir with the old man Logan. Throw in Black Knight with the old man Logan. Whatever the case may be, right? Lots of cool stuff you can do there. But there is some interesting conversations to be had with these guys. Um, like a Doom Dorm combo, you know, Dorm gives the revive. Doom can't just be one shot. He's got to be controlled a little bit more intelligently. Otherwise, he'll ult and pop off with Dorm. We got Gambit Rogue. If, you know, Nightcrawler's off doing his own thing or the Extreme is being paired with a character like Dorm, you can throw Rogue and Gambit with like a Black Knight combo. Maybe, you know, maybe Nightcrawler goes off with Little Man Logan. You put Cyclops, Forge, Rogue, Gambit with the Black Knight. See what happens there. We got the Gwenum Red Goblin. This one's coming out of left field for a lot of people I know. But when you have a very big red goblin and Gwenum goes before giving the offense up and then goblin pops off, that is scary. So this is an interesting combination, in my opinion, absent the other high mind members. Instead, you want to get other characters that are going to make these guys go faster. Like we have the Eternals in, in you know, rank five. Maybe the Eternals can go before the enemy to get our slower Gwenum. I think she's at 120 speed to go first. And then Red Goblin, who's even slower, will go after that with that offense up and just obliterate people. That would be a pretty interesting combination as well. Robbie, Black Cat, what more can you say there? You know, can't be turned me to rewind until you get those death proofs off. Lots of bleed synergy between these two. We got turn me to rewind, ability block, buff, uh, buff control, lots of stuff going on there. They would be higher, except honestly, because they are controllable right away, they need something like hard light. So it's not really like a power couple per se, because hard light is integral in that. And then there's the Tangled Web uh, combination. At 2099, they found so many ways to make 2099 obsolete. First of all, he gets resisted all the time. Secondly, Black Knight one shots him. Thirdly, Quicksilver gets off and stuff for him. Fourthly, Old Man Logan gets speed every time he gets it. Like, they found ways to make the 2099 Weaver gimmick fall off fast. They haven't done that to the Eternals yet, which is why Tangled Web is below them. And then for Weaver, I mean, the charge mechanic, super interesting, right? Hey, no accuracy for you. And then they're like, hmm, wait a minute, that's too good. Let's give Cabal accuracy. Let's give New Warriors accuracy. Let's give uh, Superior Six accuracy. Let's give uh, Secret Defenders, make everything unavoidable. They just, 
they found ways to make her kit pretty much obsolete to almost every other team that came after her, making the Tangled Web a super sad team, in my opinion. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys runners-up after looking at the top five. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below if you got any other diamonds in the rough you'd like to bring up. Bye for now.